So today we're making Gâteau à l'orange. It's an orange sponge cake from Julia Child, and this is Jamie and Julia. Hello. Oh! <laughs> bon appétit. All right, so we're in Mastering the Art of French Cooking, volume one today, from Julia Child, and I'm in the back of the book where the cakes hang out. I'm in part of the book called Five French Cakes. Gâteau à l'orange. I think this is gonna share some similarities with the cake I've already made. One of the five French cakes called Ren de Saba, Queen of Sheba cake, chocolate and almond cake, whatever you want to call it cake. So as she says here, when it comes to these five French cakes, after you've practiced with one or two, you will find that they can all be made very quickly. Any one of these may be prepared for the oven in about 20 minutes. So let me just get everything in order, prepped, and we got a challenge. Let's get cooking, bacon, whatever. I need to start with one orange that I'm just gonna grate all this rind right off it. So let me just cut that sucker in half. Juice this one orange. Just strain that. So this is gonna start right here and it's gonna work its way down to when it's in the oven right here. So 20 minutes for this. <sighs> okay. Let the games begin. Preheat the oven to 350, done. Butter and flour, a cake pan. Some flour in this random bag for some reason. And let's shake it all about. Make a damn mess on step two. Bowl me. Thank you. Four large egg yolks. One, two, three, four. And then with a whisk or an electric beater, uh, just to save time, I'm going with the electric today. Wow, just eating up time right now. Four ounces, 114 grams of sugar. I gotta gradually beat it into the egg yolks till I've reached the ribbon stage. That's when I like lift up these whisks here and then I move them about. You can see the ribbons like hanging out on top, the ribbons for a brief moment before they go hide away. And then it's thickened up, it's pale yellow, it is done. All right, I think we should do the old flipperoo. To add in the orange peel gradually. No, just add it in. One eighth pint, 60 milliliters of orange juice. Pinch of salt until this is light and foamy. And then I have three and a half ounces, 100 grams of cake flour. It needs to be sifted. Too sweet. I'm gonna just sift it right into this mofo. And then beat in the flour. Uh, yeah, just do it really quickly with this. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the Silver Fox. So I've made several cakes without a stand mixer, but when it comes to deadlines, like 20 minute deadlines, I'm gonna need a little more power. So I need to beat, okay. The egg whites of four eggs into my very clean bowl with a pinch of salt. I'm gonna beat this until soft peaks have formed. Ah! Okay, once I've reached that foamy stage, I'm just gonna add a quick hoot of this cream of tartar. It's not in the book, but I always like to add a little, little of that just to uh, stabilize these bad boys. What is this, like, what, soft peaks? Yeah, I'm gonna call that soft peaks. Gradually add in one tablespoon of sugar until I've reached stiff peaks. Okay, that is stiff peaks. Okay, so bring the cake batter over here. That is looking fine and dandy. I'm gonna add in just a little bit of this meringue, fold it in, and then in goes the rest, right? I hope so, I really hope so. There you go. Gently fold all this in, kind of make sure that the stuff on the bottom where the sun don't shine is getting attention too. Incorporate every last little piece of this. And what is that? Three minutes? I got this, I got this. Immediately pour this into the cake tin. Run the mixture up the rim all around the cake pan. There's a reason for this. Uh, there's a bunch of people in the comments that have told me why I do this. So I will just, uh, here they are right here, all the comments. You can just read those because I don't have time to explain why. Middle rack, 30 to 35 minutes. Middle rack. Nine 
Nine seconds to spare. All right. So let this cool for six to eight minutes. I can do that. So I gotta run a knife around the edge of this cake, reverse it onto a rack, and hopefully it comes out. And if it doesn't, that is annoying. Put a little parchment paper on the bottom of that cake pan, that would have been, that would have been a thing to do. Yeah, I thought that was gonna end in pain and misery. Just scrape away, scrape away the ugly bits because it's all beautiful underneath. So I need this to cool completely. This is like an hour, maybe two, hopefully an hour. So there's a couple ways to skin this, skin this cake. Um, you, you can firstly just do what we just did. You'd be done. Orange sponge cake, you could just eat it now. But that's not what we do around here. Usually we go the full, the full mile. So we're gonna make this sponge cake with orange butter filling. Gâteau foray à la crème d'orange. Uh, this orange butter filling may be used for cakes, okay? Um, when softened butter, blah, 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 blah. Place all the ingredients alongside in the saucepan and beat with a wire whisk. Place all the ingredients alongside. Oh, like alongside. I, that stumped me in the past. Okay, so I got a saucepan. And that's great that you have one, but actually we gotta do this orange thing again. You know what to do. What I got here is 10 grams, 284 grams of sugar. Uh, typically I use granulated sugar, even though she calls for caster sugar, but you can't find caster sugar around here. So I usually use granulated sugar. I accidentally bought this. This is cane sugar. You can see the difference in color. That's my bad. <laughs> it's my bad. I looked it up and you can use them interchangeably, so it's all good. Um, because uh, secretly I used it in the cake too. Oops. Three ounces, 85 grams of softened butter. Should I cut it up or do you think it's fine? Two whole eggs. Two egg yolks. The rind of an orange. One eighth pint, around 60 milliliters of this freshly squozen, squozen or squeezened? Squozened, no, I don't know. Squeezened, freshly squeezened orange juice. That's it, you can drink that. So Cointreau, an orange liqueur, I need about a tablespoon. And then an optional jam, jam thermometer. Oh, I, okay. Let there be light. Saucepan over here. Low heat, start whisking this together. And I'm looking for between 160 and 163 degree Fahrenheit. And I have a thermometer. It's not necessarily a jam thermometer, but it will do the job. We're done, we're done. To my Richard here, I'm gonna bring this over here. This is a pan of cold water. I'm gonna add the sauce in there and continue to whisk. So it's gonna liken itself to honey, like thicken up, um, kind of, I guess. And it's gonna be too hot to touch. Yeah, it's too hot to touch. I've gotta believe that once this cools down, it thickens up because as of now, I have no idea how you ice a cake with this. I can't tell from these diagrams because they're just drawings, but it looks like it's an icing. This is more of like a syrupy kind of thing. It's kind of like honey, but also not. I followed it to a T, I used all these right ingredients, so I don't know where I'm going wrong, but I don't want to do too much more to this in case I screw everything up by like overcooking the eggs or something. Maybe at the end of the day, this thing is correct. So I just don't know how that's gonna, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. 
It's not really a filling. I think I'm just gonna go for it. I'm gonna go for it. She says split the cake in half. Can I use this knife? Or a serrated knife or... Is a serrated knife a bad idea? No, it's a good idea. Split it in half. Honestly, I could have cut that more evenly. Using a spatula, spread enough orange butter filling on the lower layer of the cake to make a 1 8 inch coating. She says use a spatula, but I'm pretty sure I can just do this, honestly. I don't know how this works. So I need to coat this with 1 8 inch of whatever this is. Put this top layer. I've completely psyched myself out. I feel like I need to put more, oh my God. Cakes, man. Cakes, cakes, cakes. So I gotta brush off any crumbs. Done and done. And uh, I didn't put this on correctly. I'm kind of frustrated and when I get frustrated, I get sloppy and then when I get sloppy, I cut the cake unevenly and I start making mistakes. Paint the cake with the coating of the apricot glaze. I gotta, oh right. I forgot that I bought apricot preserves, which is just jam, apricot jam. And I have to do something with it. I need a quarter pint of apricot glaze. Unfortunately, I need the saucepan, so this, whatever this is, has to come out of here. Thing that is gonna ruin my cake. I gotta tell you, I'm just gonna be honest with you. I've run out of steam. I don't wanna do this anymore. And it has nothing to do with this, like the initial cake recipe, but since this is too runny and since I poured it onto the cake and made the cake all like, I don't know what I've done on the inside of this cake. I hope it's correct but I don't know and I feel like it's just kind of, I just don't want the cake to get soggy. And if it's gonna get soggy, then all this hard work is just gonna feel like it's for nothing. So like currently I have my hand and a bunch of sugar syrup, which is great. Trying to interpret what's going on in the book. I'm looking for answers online. I can't find any. And it's just like, I don't know what I'm doing right now. Anyway, it's fine. I'm gonna put on a happy face, try to finish this damn thing and we'll go from there. Everything's so damn sticky too. To pass this apricot jam through a sieve. Oy. And I need roughly 120 milliliters, which is a quarter pint of this stuff. So I need to get the apricot. Everything is, I'm trying to cheer myself up with the snowman. Kind of working. Two tablespoons of sugar, and then heat this up on a moderately high heat, kind of continue to stir it, kind of like what we just did with the last thing, to do exactly what I did with this, except at a higher heat. Where the hell is the... <sighs> the snowman, the snowman. For two to three minutes, until it reaches 225 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, that's done. Let's try this out. Pour the apricot. Paint the cake with a coating of the apricot glaze. I assume that's the entire cake. Oh my God, paint the cake. What I've done here is I flipped the cake upside down and I forgot to re-flip it back over so that the, the bigger, wider part is at the... It's fucked. It's over. I don't know what to do. It looks like shit. I... Why can't you do this? 
Five ounces of almonds on a baking tray into the oven. I need to toast these and I gotta keep them in there for 10 minutes. Keep them stirring. And they gotta cool. So I'm gonna pulverize these on high speed for 30 seconds. This next part seems rather difficult. In this diagram, Julia lifts the cake up and then brushes the sides with almonds, but I can't do that because this cake is too sticky. And I can't and I won't. But I'm gonna find a way to get these almonds onto the side of this cake. How's this gonna work? Okay, she says that not more than a quarter will adhere to this thing, but you need a lot of them for manipulation. <gasps> That was an accident. It kind of screwed up the whole aesthetic that I was going for. Some of this stuff fell on the top glaze part and that was supposed to be almond free. So just add that to the list. It's something I'm gonna have to live with. Uh, maybe I should embrace it a little bit. Just like sprinkle a little on top. Yeah, now I need to get this onto a clean plate. Okay, and let's just embrace that a little bit more. So I didn't use a lot of the almonds, lots left over, lots left over. So I have to save them for something else down the road. I'm sure something else in Julia's repertoire will come up with pulverized almonds, I guarantee it. So I'm thinking of just like doing one last thing here, which is optional, but I'm gonna choose to do it because my cake needs, needs a little TLC. An optional glazed orange peel. There's a couple things I'm trying to hide and I think a glazed orange peel on top is gonna be just the ticket out of here. My goal here is to peel off the longest orange peel strip that I can. I'm trying to do this in one go here. That's it. Not bad, let's try that again. Maybe I can get one longer. Ah, so now I'm gonna cut these into strips. Julia has recommendation of how long and how wide these should be, but honestly, I'm just gonna do what feels right. Into simmering water for 10 to 15. Once these peels have finished simmering, I have to drop them into some cold water to refresh them. And then I gotta dry them. All right, this next step she's telling me is gonna be another 30 minutes. I don't think I have it in me today. I think I'm just gonna try to hack it. This is gonna be like three tablespoons, whatever that is, yeah, of cane sugar. And then this is roughly a cup of water. Bring that to a boil. Once that's boiling, I'm gonna add in the orange peel and I'm gonna add in whatever amount of vanilla this ends up being. That's gonna go down to a simmer for 10 minutes. I was putting on this whole song and dance about how 30 minutes was gonna be too long and this ended up being like 15, 20 minutes anyway. So, <laughs> you, you know, you can't win. Let me remove these orange peels from the syrup. Don't touch it. Why would you touch it? That doesn't make any sense. Something messed up up here today. 30 seconds later and these things have cooled off to a point where I can grab them and I can try to straighten them out a bit. That's what those are looking like. Whatever I just did was not Julia Child's method. I honestly just made that up, whatever I just did. Anyway, Jamie is not here right now. He's completely checked out. And uh, I think I'm just gonna pick this back up tomorrow, honestly. the next day. I'm ready to eat some cake now. Feeling refreshed. Firstly, let's get the orange thingies on the top. I'm gonna arrange them in a little pile. Just like a, like a campfire. That's it. Order up.
So what, like a little bit more wouldn't hurt, right? It was looking bleak at times, but at the end, when it's on the plate, does it matter? I don't know. It's just one. Mm. I'm not talking just like the refinement of a cake. I'm just saying like, if you eat that thing blindfolded, lives up to the sponge cake name. It's fluffy, dare I say moist, dare I say it. It's really just not like a decadent, like a birthday cake or anything like that. No, this is like a cake you eat in the middle of the day. Just like what I'm doing right now. It's the perfect setting for it because I'm not too uncomfortable right now. I'm ready to go for the rest of the day. And I had a delicious um, half of a cake. And this is gonna be my third Julia Child orange flavored dessert. And we all know what I think about the other two. And the third one is just on the same level. The recipe told me to make this much filling. This much filling. And oh, look, oh, you can see it's been in the fridge overnight and you can see it now it wants to be like honey. Bastard. Uh, this was Jamie and Julia. Bon appetit. Over. A few days ago over on Patreon, I did a live stream where I was able to talk with my patrons and we just shot the shit, answered questions, had a good time. I had a beer, it was a great night. Now, if you'd like to join that, you have to sign up for my Patreon because I do those often, along with extra content that comes out each week. So be there or don't, just watch this. That's totally cool too. Anyway, links in the description or uh, right there.